To be able to leverage Azure AD and cloud apps, we need to synchronize our user identities. When we also synchronize our device identities, we get additional capabilities around co-management, authentication, and conditional access. In this video, I'm going to walk you through how to configure Azure AD Connect traditional sync to help with just that. Hi everyone. So one of the first things we need to set up is Azure AD Connect traditional sync. Now, heading into the Azure portal in Azure AD uh, as I am here, and heading into Azure AD Connect, you might expect to see the installer for the agent of Azure AD Connect traditional sync. It's not here. Um, so what we need to do is uh, essentially download that to our on-premise environment, install it, and manage it from there. The difference between Azure AD Connect traditional sync and Azure AD Connect cloud sync that we did in the in the previous video is that the traditional sync is managed from on-premise and the cloud sync is managed from the cloud. So in the cloud version, we just have one agent on the device, on, on the in the domain, which is sort of controlled and managed and all the policies created and managed in the cloud. Whereas the traditional sync is all managed from on-premise and then it reaches out to the cloud when it needs to. So uh, they, have, they have pros and cons, but we're gonna go with uh, traditional sync for this environment because we need to sync devices and there are a few other differences but the the thing that makes the difference today for me in this lab is synchronizing device identities from on-premise to the cloud I have some on-premise identities that I need to synchronize on-premise devices that I need to manage from the cloud through co-management through various things so I need to I need to get those synchronized um, so we'll go ahead and do that. So I'm going to go to Google and find the link for Azure AD Connect, second one after the advert. And here we are. So it's called Microsoft Azure AD Connect. And it was this one was published on the 31st of March and it's the latest version 1640. I'm going to go ahead and download, download that, install it and we'll see how it goes. Okay, so I'm just copying it to my domain controller. I'm gonna use my domain controller for the sync. Maybe not best in a in a real production environment to have a domain control with, with outbound internet access. In this case, I really couldn't care less. It's a, it's a lab. I've secured it in other ways and it's got no personal details on that at all. So um, I'm not too worried, but we'll add a copy across and then we'll start the installer. Okay, here we go. So it's gonna go ahead and install the rather heavy um, client for Azure AD Connect on premise. Okay, looks like that's just loaded up underneath my ADUC window. Okay, so we're gonna run through this. I'll leave this on the screen for a few seconds for you to read through it. If you want to pause the video, if you need to, this is, you know, this is the standard screen you get when you do this. I will be using express settings just in case you're uh, concerned I'm gonna do something complex. I'm gonna go ahead and do express uh, and then we'll configure it afterwards. Okay, so the first thing we need to do is connect to Azure AD. So we're gonna use the name of my Azure AD global admin, which is Dean at getmodern.co.uk. And then it's asked me to sign in using modern auth because that's a requirement in my tenant. And accept MFA. Well, good. Okay, I wasn't too worried about that. I kind of know my username and password, so that, that was an easy step. Uh, next, we have um, we've got to log in with our enterprise admin credentials. So in this environment, the one we've just set up through the previous two videos is um, is uh, you know my, my lab admin is an enterprise admin. So I'm going to go ahead and log in with this username and password here. Okay, so you can see that we've got um, an issue. So it's highlighted that from a UPN perspective. On the left hand side, 
the adupn suffix of corp.contoso.com hasn't been added to the Azure AD domain. And I, I don't want to. So I don't want any of my users who have this as their UPN, so dean at corp.contoso.com. I don't want anyone to be using that to log into the environment. It's, it's not going to be a good experience for them. It's not going to work. So also, I've, I've not added it to here. I couldn't I couldn't validate it as my own. I don't own contoso.com. So I've added in Get Modern, and you saw that in the first video. Um, maybe the first video or the second video. But yeah, it was one of the previous videos. We added in that UPN. I'll link it into the description below. And that one is verified. So we're all good. I'm going to have to tick this to accept the danger that not all users will be able to to log in if they don't if their UPN doesn't match this verified domain. But that's all good for me. So I'm going to go ahead and click next. And so it says it's going to do all these things. Um, and I'm happy with all those things. So I'm going to click install. All right, so while this is finishing up, I want to be able to check that my synchronization has completed successfully. So I'm going to create a new user. I'm going to call her Lucy. Obviously her surname is Esther. And give her a full UPN of lucy.tester at getmodern.co.uk and her pre-Windows 2000 name is, is lucy.tester. Um, so next, I'm going to give her a password and it doesn't expire. Okay, so we've got lucy.tester here and uh, our process is still configuring in the background so we'll leave that for a few minutes longer. The reason I've done this is that in the previous video we we synchronized Jimmy using Azure AD Cloud Sync as a test, and as part of the setup for this video, I removed all of that Cloud Sync sync configuration. So that won't be that won't be helping here. We can't run them in parallel, so I'm going to run Azure AD Traditional Sync, uh, which is this thing that I'm connecting here, and that should hopefully add Lucy Tester as a new user when it finishes up the sync. Okay, great. So configuration complete. It says we can now log into Azure and 365 to verify the user accounts. So that's good. Um, recycle bins not enabled and uh, it's configured to use consistency keywords as the source anchor. So that's good. Let's choose exit. So as I say, we're looking for um, Lucy Tester. I added that user kind of halfway through the sync. Uh, the, the configuration of Azure AD Connect. So maybe it's not synced, but let's give it a go. Back over to our to get modern Azure AD. And we are looking for a user called Lucy. She's not there at all yet. So that's, that, I mean, that's understandable. Oh, hang on. Um, I've got my alphabet wrong. Maybe she's underneath Lee. Nope. She's not there. So we're going to need to wait for that synchronization to take place. So I'll go ahead and wait for that. So back over to our domain controller. If we go into Azure AD Connect, we see that actually the um, synchronization service suspends when you're starting to, to mess around with, with stuff in this wizard. Um, so, I mean, that's, that's interesting, but I know it's set up, so it will eventually synchronize Lucy.tester uh, for the me for the meantime, I don't really need that to happen, but it will eventually, and, and that will confirm it for me when it does. But what I do want to do first is make sure that I've got the device, uh, synchronization taking place as well, because what I really want to do is do this hybrid Azure AD join. I'm not too fussed about device right back, but we'll configure it anyway. Okay, so this is asking for my Azure AD login, which I can never type first time. 
Okay, so in this instance, we're going to configure hybrid Azure AD join. I click next, and I want to support Windows 10 or later devices. I really, I mean, we do have that that Windows 7 device that is in the environment, but I really, I really don't want to do an upgrade. This isn't, you know, Windows 7 to Windows 10 upgrades are a real thing of the past in in where I work, so I don't really want to get into that. So I'm going to go with Windows 10 or later, and the domain joined. So, I'm an enterprise admin. The user that is running Azure AD Connect is uh, enterprise admin. So I'm going to go ahead and click for this to add uh, the corp.contoso.com with the authentication service of Azure AD. And I'll click add. It was asking for my enterprise admin account. So I'll go ahead and type that. Now, if you aren't enterprise admin and you need to, you need to essentially get this SCP, this service connection point configured on, uh, you know, by someone else, by someone with enterprise admin, then you can download this, this configure SCP thing here and hand that over to them for them to run that for you. Okay. So the only thing it needs to configure here is the SCP for device registration. So it's going to go ahead and do that. Great, so let's uh, leave this to synchronize for a few minutes and then go into Azure AD and see what we got. I've got some really good news. So it looks like the synchronization has finished. So if I head over down to uh, just underneath Lee Goo, we have a Lucy tester. So Lucy is now synchronized from, from, from on-premise, which is brilliant news. Uh, I'm gonna go and check on my devices now. So over into devices and yeah, this is the stuff from on-premise. So that's good. We have now got hybrid Azure AD joined devices. Okay. So it's been a few minutes. I've let this device register. So I'm going to go ahead and do uh, DS reg. Status and we'll start at the top. So with this command, we get the device state at the top and that shows us that it's Azure AD joined, which is good. And also domain joined, which is good. So it's hybrid joined, it gives us the domain name and the, the device name, the device full name. And it gives us some tenant information over here. And then further on, it gives us the full information about the tenant. User state and, and NGC relates to next generation credential, which is um, uh, Hello for Business. And uh, yeah, this is, this is all, I've not set up Hello for Business, so that's, that makes sense. Primary refresh token for SSO isn't, isn't enabled by the looks of it. And it's telling me my um, the key sign test has passed, etc. So the NGC prereq check, I'm not really too interested in that's Hello for Business, but crucially, we've got a, domain, a hybrid domain joined device. So over into the tenant, if I refresh this page, we should see client one has now reappeared and he has, click on this and you should see that the registered date is relatively recently. Um, it's six minutes ago, according to my watch. So that's, that's about right. So yeah, we're all good. We can essentially hopefully agree that we've got some devices that are hybrid joined and we have user identities that have been synchronized from on-premise Lucy tester. For instance, you saw me configure Lucy at getmodern, lucy.tester at getmodern.co.uk. So we've pretty much successfully set up Azure AD Connect in the simplest way possible. So there we go. I said that in this video, I was going to walk you through the configuration of Azure AD Connect to traditional sync. Well, we now have user and device identities synchronized to Azure AD. We're ready to get started with some config manager stuff. See you next time.